Uh, let's start with Barry and address this situation. What has gone on? Why has the school been marked as inadequate? Is it because Ofsted do not appreciate what discipline means in school? I go to lots of schools all over the country. I've got a lot of schools that have been categorised as good or even outstanding. Um, my estimation of good and outstanding when it comes to discipline is often very different from Ofsted's. I think generally their standards in terms of what good discipline is, what good relationships within a school are, I think they've got very low standards. And is this across the board, do you think, Catherine? Are low standards across the state sector and the private sector in education? Yeah, I think that people imagine that corridors in schools are filled with children skipping down, you know, skipping along, chatting about Aristotle and enjoying life, when actually the reality is that um, kids are getting beaten up, they're getting pushed and shoved and bullied, uh, lots of screaming and shouting and running. And um, the question is, is that what we want our schools to be like? You know, uh, do we want that kind of chaos? Because it's not just that that happens in the corridors and that children are actually unsafe. But then when they get into their lessons, they're so high from the nonsense in the corridors that it can take in some places 10, 15 minutes to calm the children down to be able to get on with their learning. And when you are trying to catch children up uh, with their chronological reading age, there are some children who might start secondary school with the reading age of a five or a six-year-old when they are in fact 11 years old, you need as much time in the classroom as possible. And if they're uh, wasting their time misbehaving and making the children unsafe and that they themselves are unsafe, this should be something that we're all worried about. But weirdly, uh, we're not worried about that. And we're not learning from the schools that um, are doing their very best at trying to improve that behavior for the sake of the children. Right. So, I mean, all this is common sense to me, and I'm assuming most of our viewers will share this, that in order to learn, you need to have good behaviour. You can't have one without the other. So who is taking offence at discipline in schools? Barry, why are schools being punished for having good discipline? Look, it's easy, isn't it? When you try and implement change in a school, you're going you're gonna to ruffle some feathers. You're going to annoy some people. Some people won't like what you're doing. So you'll always get some irate parents. Instead of following the normal procedures, complaint procedure, a lot of parents will go directly to a governor or a lot of parents will go directly to Ofsted or a lot of parents go directly to the press. There are parents that want their 15 minutes of fame. Good head teachers, they hold hold their ground. They say, no, this is what I want. These are the values of the school. This is what we're going to stick with. We can't allow the most difficult parents to dictate the culture of the school. It's not fair on staff and it's not fair on the, the pupil body as a whole. So I'm hearing that the, the teachers have to buy in because obviously change is never a good thing. Uh, Ofsted inspectors have to buy in because they have to appreciate that good discipline means good learning. And also parents have to buy in because if parents don't see this as a benefit for their child, they're going to complain, as has been the case here, over things such as children should be silent in assemblies. Children should cross their arms and track a teacher and pay attention. I can't see how these are problems, but it, it, it is a case of buy in, isn't it? Uh, Catherine, have you found that your outcomes have won people over? Yeah. So the outcomes uh, can definitely win parents over, but any new head in a school where they're trying to turn it around doesn't have those outcomes. And um, so it can be very hard when there are, it'll be a small number of parents, mind you. Most parents will be very grateful for what's happening and they'll be thrilled that finally their child is able to learn. Uh, unfortunately, they're often the, the quietest parents. <laughs> it's the loudest parents who can give a, a, a lot of trouble. But I'd say the thing that heads fear most of all is Ofsted. The thing that uh, will prevent a head from really giving children what they need, which is a loving environment that holds standards high for them and looks after them so that they're not getting beaten up in the corridors, um, the thing that will stop a head from implementing those systems is their fear of Ofsted. And what worries me with this particular situation is that Ofsted has sort of let us down, really. Um, and I have to say that that sort of thing used to happen over a decade ago with Ofsted inspectors. It was quite common that that I thought had stopped happening. So when I read about this particular story, I was very worried because I thought, oh, my goodness, is it the case that Ofsted has gone back to its old ways? Because that makes things very, very hard for head teachers and very hard for those of us trying to persuade 
uh, other leaders in education that good discipline is a good thing to have in schools.